This is a C5 all-road. This video show the procedures required to change the timing belt, coolant pump, and thermostat, on Audi V6 2.7T engine. As per the manufacturer, this job requires special tools. Camshaft lock tool 3391. Camshaft sprocket counter holding tool 3036. Crankshaft lock tool 3242 and timing belt tensioner lock pin T40011. Camshaft gear puller T40001 is also recommended, but you can use any gear puller, as long as it will fit properly. While anyone can follow these directions, this video is not intended for unexperienced individuals. Serious damage can occur to your engine if the engine is run with incorrect timing. Here are some facts about this engine that will help me demonstrate the procedures. All directions are based on the engine itself and not the vehicle. This means, the left side of the engine is the actual left as viewed from the front. The left cylinder head is called bank 1 and contains cylinder 1, 2, and 3. The right cylinder head is called bank 2 and contains cylinder 4, 5, and 6. The first step is removing the front bumper. To do this, jack up the car and remove both front wheels. Remove three or four screws from the front section of the wheel housing liner. Pry the liner back and remove three 10 mm nuts. Do this on both sides. Remove any other screws that fasten the bumper to the fender flare. Disconnect the headlight washer hose by pulling out the clip and pull apart. Pull out the two lower grill by the fog lights. Be careful with these, the clips can break. Pour some oil on the clip so they slip out more easily. Disconnect the fog light harness. Look up and you will see a hex bolt facing upwards. These secure the bumper to the car. Remove them. Pry the bumper out of the fender then pull the bumper forward to remove. Now that the bumper is off, you need to place the vehicle in the service position. Service position mean to move the lock carrier, also called the radiator support, forward enough to allow access to the front of the engine. Start by removing the two outer bolts shown and the two screws by the air inlet. Lift the air duct piece from the air box and pull it out of the lock carrier. Disconnect the refrigerant sensor harness from the AC condenser. Remove two bolts that fasten the fender to the lock carrier, one each side. Remove three T45 Torx bolts that fasten the lock carrier to the cross member. Do this on both sides. Do not remove the small 10 mm nut. This keep the buffer attached to the lock carrier. Screw in the long hex bolts removed from the bumper into one of these holes. Do not screw in all the way, just enough so the lock carrier have something to slide on when pulling forward. Do this on both sides. If you have Audi VW Special Tool 3411, use that instead of this bolt. Remove the screws from the coolant reservoir then disconnect the harness from below. Bring it forward. Pull the lock carrier forward as far as it will go. This is what most of us do to get more space. These steps are optional. It is done only if you need more space to work. Disconnect the oil line from the radiator and detach it from the lock carrier. Disconnect all wire harness from the left side of the vehicle. This is the left as viewed from the driver's seat. Remove the hood lock or disconnect the cable and wire harness from it. Remove the power steering cooling line from the lock carrier and any other part that prevents the lock carrier from moving forward. And finally, disconnect the upper radiator hose. If you can work with the space gained, you can leave the radiator hose connected. Just make sure you bring the coolant reservoir forward enough to prevent the hose from stretching. Here is the amount of space you have now. As you can see, this is much better. Now that you have access to the engine, remove the front air pipes. Disconnect them from the throttle body, the diverter valves, the intercooler, and the timing belt cover. Remove the viscous fan. This is left hand tread, so loosen is clockwise. You must counter hold the pulley with a pin wrench. If you don't have one, use a large 90 degree needle nose plier to hold the pulley. The nut size is 32 millimeters. Once loosen, spin it off.
This is how you hold the viscous fan pulley. Now remove the ribbed belt, also called a serpentine belt. With a 17mm wrench or socket, preferably a long one, release the tension on the belt by swinging the tensioner towards the right. Remove the belt then lock the tensioner in the compress position using a spare allen key. Compress the tensioner just as you did before, when the holes align, insert the allen key to lock the tensioner. With a 10mm hex key, remove the tensioner. Pay attention to the dowel pin during installation. It must align with the hole in the engine block to lock the tensioner in a set position. Remove the power steering pump pulley. Counter hold the pulley just as you did with the viscous fan pulley. Remove the viscous fan pulley. The pulley is held down with four bolts. You need size 6 mm and 5 mm hex or allen key. Two of these bolts cannot be removed from the pulley. You must rotate the pulley to access them. The topmost bolt is the smallest. This requires a 5 mm hex key and must be accessed through the smaller hole. The other three bolts are 6 mm hex. Remove the timing belt covers. You need 5 mm hex for the left and right portion. The centerpiece use clips. Now it's time to place cylinder number 1 at top dead center on the compression stroke. To do so, use a 12 point, size 24 socket to rotate the engine clockwise. Align the mark on the pulley with the arrow pointer on the lower timing belt guard. This may be hard to see. Use white nail polish to emphasize the mark, then wipe it off. The mark you are seeing here is what's left after wiping. When the mark line up, take a look at the camshaft sprockets, notice that there is an oval shaped piece with different size holes in it. The tool also have different size pins in it. It will fit on the camshaft sprocket only when the engine is at top dead center on the compression stroke. The larger holes must be facing each other for the tool to fit. As you can see, the larger holes are not facing each other, so the tool will not fit. This is a safety feature that ensures you are at the correct top dead center. So, while the engine is currently at top dead center, it is on the wrong stroke. If this happen, rotate the engine 360 degrees clockwise until the mark realign. If the larger holes are facing inward, insert the tool, part number 3391. If you are wondering why this hit or miss situation occurs, this is because this is a four-stroke engine. The piston goes down to draw air and fuel in, 
then go up to top dead center to compress the air fuel mixture, then downwards to make power. After ignition, it then goes back to top dead center for the exhaust stroke. To accomplish this, the crankshaft must turn twice while the camshafts turn once. You can see this by looking at the size of the gears. The camshaft gear is twice the size of the crankshaft gear, this means the crankshaft gear spins twice as fast, thus doing two revolution while the cam gear do one. Getting back to the job at hand. Now that the engine is at top dead center on the compression stroke, you need to lock the crankshaft. In the cylinder block, on the right side, there is a threaded plug that you must remove and place a special tool in its place. Part number 3242. It is shown here with the engine outside of the car for clarity. However it is not so easy to access when the engine is in the car. There is a hole in the crankshaft that the tool goes into. This prevents the engine from turning. If the engine is in the car, you can gain access to it by bringing the sway bar down. Then detach the turbocharge pipe from the oil pan and push it upwards. This will get you a good access to it. The sway bar nut size is 13 mm and the air pipe is 5 mm Allen key. Remove the vibration damper. Loosen 8 hex bolts and remove the vibration damper. Tool size is 6 mm Allen key. Remove the lower timing belt guard. Tool size required is 10 mm socket. Loosen the camshaft sprockets, but do not remove the bolts. Just loosening enough to allow the sprocket to pop off and rotate, they are pressed on. If you don't have air impact tool, counter hold the gear with a tool such as this one. Use gear puller T4001 to separate the camshaft sprocket from the camshaft. Again counter hold the camshaft sprocket. As you can see it will want to turn. This is the reason why I keep the old belt on up to now, however you don't want to try to move things, counter hold it. Be aware that, when separated, there may be a violent pop. Now it's time to remove the timing belt. Reduce the tension on the belt by compressing the tensioner. This is done by inserting a 8mm hex tool into the timing belt tensioning roller and rotate clockwise. The mechanism is hydraulic. So go slow and steady until the holes line up. Insert a special tool part number T40011 into the hole to keep it compress. Here is a closer look. Compress until the holes line up then insert the pin. Remove the timing belt tensioner. Bolt size is 10 mm socket. Remove the timing belt. It is easier to remove the camshaft sprocket first then remove the belt from it. Remember this procedure when installing the belt. At this point, the job should look like this. Remove the thermostat housing. 
Do not disconnect any hose from it. Remove the thermostat and o-ring by pulling it forward with a plier. Some coolant will run out so have something to catch it. When installing a new one, the bleeder valve should be at the top. Now it's time to remove the coolant pump. Remove 9 bolts and 2 nuts. One of the bolts is hidden behind the power steering pump. You must remove the power steering pump to access it. Do not disconnect the hydraulic line from the pump. The pump is held down with three bolts. Tool required is 6 mm hex. The rearmost bolt must be accessed from the top. You need a long reach hex key for this. Remove them as shown. This is a magnetic pickup tool. It helps to remove the bolt. Now lift the pump up to access the bolt. There it is. Remove the coolant pump. Some coolant will run out, so contain it from below. Scrape the old gasket from the engine block. This is the new coolant pump. Install the thermostat, o-ring, and housing. Ensure that the bleeder valve is at the top. Lubricate the o-ring with coolant, then install the housing. Tighten all bolts to 10 newton meters or 88.5 pound inch. Install the new coolant pump and gasket. Tighten all bolts to 10 newton meters or 88.5 pound inch. Install the power steering pump. Tighten all bolts to 22 newton meters or 16.2 pound feet. Replace any rollers that come with the kit. Please note that there is a spacer washer behind each roller. Do not forget to install the washer first, then the roller. Even though the procedure not shown in the video, here are the torque specs. Tighten the tensioning roller bolt to 22 newton meters or 16.2 pound feet. The tensioner lever bolt below is also tightened to 22 newton meters. However, you don't have to remove this to change the roller. Tighten the idler roller bolt to 42 newton meters or 31 pound feet. Install a new timing belt. Root the belt as shown. Start at the bottom around the crankshaft gear. Space is very limited here. Make sure the belt align with the teeth. It is easy to skip a teeth or two here. Place your finger under the belt and slide it on. This is what can happen if you don't do it properly. After the crankshaft pulley, go up and over the timing belt tensioning roller at left and the idler wheel at the right, at the same time keeping the belt tight around the crankshaft sprocket. Hold on to the belt at the crankshaft sprocket ensuring that the belt don't slip, then continue on from the idler wheel to the right camshaft sprocket, then down under the coolant pump pulley, then around the left crankshaft sprocket then back to the timing belt tensioning roller. Put the belt around the left camshaft sprocket first then onto the camshaft. It is easier that way. Doing so will prevent you from stretching the belt. You can choose the orientation you want the sprocket to be in to facilitate your gear puller next time you're doing this job. Install the timing belt tensioner. Tighten to 10 newton meters or 88.5 pound inch. Install the camshaft lock tool 3391. 
Remove the pin from the timing belt tensioner. Compress the tensioning element by rotating clockwise. Remove the lock pin T40011. Now I am going to rotate the same roller counterclockwise to pre-tension the belt. This time I am going to use a torque wrench set to 15 newton meters, that is, 11 pound feet, or 133 pound inch. You are not tightening anything, you are just applying torque until the torque wrench click then hold it there. While doing so, tighten both camshaft sprocket bolts to 30 newton meters or so, 22 pound feet. This is just to get the camshaft gear seated at this position. Once pre-tightened, you can stop applying torque to the timing belt tensioning roller and properly torque the camshaft sprockets. Counter hold the camshaft sprockets and tighten them to 55 newton meters or 40.6 pound feet. Installation is the reverse of removal, however I am gonna narrate the steps for the engine. Install the lower timing belt guard. Tighten to 10 newton meters or 88.5 pound inch. Install the viscous fan pulley. Tighten the small M6 bolt to 10 newton meters or 88.5 pound inch. Tighten the other three M8 bolts to 22 newton meters, or 16.2 pound feet. Remove camshaft lock tool 3391. Install the left, right, and center timing belt covers. Tighten to 10 newton meters or 88.5 pound inch. Pay attention to the right timing belt cover. Ensure that it is rooted properly. Install the serpentine belt tensioner. Tighten to 55 newton meters or 40.6 pound feet. Pay attention to the dowel pin which locks it in a certain position. Install the vibration damper. 
Titan all bolts to 25 newton meters or 18.4 pound feet. Use blue thread lock, also called Loctite, on these bolts. Install the power steering pump pulley, counter hold, and tighten to 22 newton meters or 16.2 pound feet. Install the serpentine belt and apply tension to it. This is done by removing the Allen key you insert before. Install the viscous fan. Tightening is counterclockwise. If you have an adapter piece that allow you to use a torque wrench. Tighten to 37 newton meters or 27.3 pound feet. Remove the crankshaft lock tool 3242 and reinstall the plug. Reconnect any oil line and radiator hose that was removed. Also, reconnect any wire harness that was removed. Fasten any other part that was removed. Fill the engine with coolant. Reinstall the front air pipes, lock carrier, and front bumper. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. See you in the next video. Of course, I am not Patrick, but I'll be a proxy for him. He told me to say this.